Oh, <laughs> golf. Excuse me. Oh, no, sir. That's not ours. Surely it was lying down there. No, sir. But, but, but Nanny, <laughs> it certainly isn't mine. Hey, baby. Please don't wake him, sir. We've had a disturbed morning as it is. Well, perhaps when he wakes up. No, thank you, sir. After all, we don't know where it's been, do we? <laughs> Thank you. the kitty? Well, it's the pram. No baby. Funny, isn't it? Could be. But a woman will often go shopping with an empty pram, so you'll be surprised. Not a nanny in Regent's Park. Oh, I don't know. Still, we'll check on it. Now, uh, could I have your name, please, sir? Yes. Hanny. Uh, how do you spell that, sir? H-A-N-N-A-Y. Uh, Richard Hanny. Six Oswald Court. W-1. Where will they take her? St. Mary's, I should think, sir. That's the nearest. Uh-huh. Well, thank you very much, sir. And if we do pick up this car, we may need to see you again. Right. I hope she isn't too badly hurt. Oh, by the way. Give that to the super. She's gone. She was treated for shock and allowed to go home. But surely you have her address. Yes, we have, but we're not really supposed to. Ah, oh, well, I know, but after all, I was there, and this is her handbag. Well, isn't there a letter or something in there? No, nothing. There's quite a great deal of money. Of course, I could hand it over to the police, but there might be a delay, and she'd be worrying, wouldn't she? Well, well... Uh... I have an honest face. Thirteen Norfolk Terrace, W2, Miss Robinson. Good morning! Can you tell me, is this 13 Norfolk Terrace? Was, once upon a time. 13's an unlucky number, isn't it? <laughs>
Curtain's up, sir. What? Yeah, here. Now, may I leave a ticket for a friend? Yes, sir. What name, sir? Uh, Miss Robinson. She, she may turn up later. Robinson. Very good, sir. That way. Yeah, thanks. Robinson. How's the baby tonight? Are you the Mr. Hannay who recovered the pram? Yes. You have my... some things of mine? Yes, but uh, they're back at the flat. That's a pity. You had no need to involve yourself in this affair. Am I involved? Say, how delightful. What's it all about? I can't talk here. I can tear myself away unless you, you particularly want to stay. Well, presently. The next turn is the interesting one. Look. They never let him out of their sight. Who? Mr. Memory, you're on now. Don Nursemaid's here again. Nanny? But I thought she was... They bungled it. Penge, Streatham, Chiswick, and now here. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's my pleasure to introduce you to one of the most remarkable men alive in the world today. A human encyclopedia of facts and figures. Ladies and gentlemen, here to answer your questions, whatever they may be, none other than Mr. Memory. <laughs> Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Before we begin, I must tell you at once that I am not a magician. I do not claim to be able to tell you whether your future life partner will be blonde or brunette, or how many children you can expect to have. <laughs> no, I deal in hard facts, ladies and gentlemen, the facts of human memory. Sporting, scientific, geographical, political, and historical. Now, uh, who is ready with the first question? What time is it? <laughs> Speak up, lady. Don't be afraid. What was the name of Napoleon's horse at the Battle of Waterloo? His name was Marengo. A white stallion, 15 hands high. Am I right, Peter? Yes. <laughs> and the next question, please. Where do flies go in the wintertime? <laughs> Where's my old woman? <laughs> Sensible questions, ladies and gentlemen, if you please. Yes, sir, you have a question, sir? Uh, what is the connection between the Sheik of Bahrain and the island of St. Helena? We have a young gentleman down here with a riddle from the mysterious east. <laughs> you have just come back from abroad, sir? Yes. Would you repeat the question, sir? What is the connection between the Sheik of Bahrain and the island of St. Helena? The island of St. Helena has become the place of exile of those convicted of plotting against the life of the Sheik of Bahrain. I'm all right, sir. Bang on. And the next question. Uh, what is Newton's law of gravitation? <laughs> I believe you were first, sir. <laughs> what president of the United States was assassinated? The gentleman asks, which president of the United States... Is it far from here to your flat? The answer is... Uh, about five minutes in a taxi. The United States was assassinated. Go. 
They know Abraham Lincoln in 1801. After you. And W. McKinley in 1901. Am I right, sir? Oh, excuse me. You know, you came up those stairs pretty smartly. I thought perhaps you might be a bit stiff after your accident. It wasn't an accident, Mr. Hannay. They tried to kill me. Please don't turn on that light. I said my work concerned our national security. You mean you're a kind of a spy? Well, we don't like that word, Mr. Hannay, but you're not far off the mark. Those men are waiting for me. Oh, come now. You need a good rest. Why not take a trip somewhere, get away from it all? Perhaps, Perhaps when the job's finished. <laughs> you travel a lot, Mr. Hannay. What do you mean, all this? Oh, yes, my job takes me all over the place. I work for the government, too, in a, in a sort of a way. Political warfare, I suppose you'd call it. I only got back yesterday, first time in years. May I get you a drink? Oh, thank you, but I don't. Well, it's just as well, because there isn't much here. <laughs> Do you mind if I have what there is? No, no, of course not. Then we can see about returning your things and getting you home. Where do you live? Wilsdon. Wilsdon? <laughs> that sounds a romantic hideaway for a secret agent. I suppose your name isn't Robinson, either. Well, it is, actually, but uh, officially I'm always referred to as Nanny. Nanny. I expect you think I ought to see a psychiatrist, but... Oh, I wouldn't go as far as that. A spot of persecution mania, perhaps. You know, I had an uncle once who used to suffer from the same thing. Only with him it was window cleaners. He used to drive him up the wall. <laughs> sure, yeah. Have you ever heard of the 39 Steps? What's that? A do-it-yourself kit? Does boomerang mean anything to you? Yes. It's a cover word for a ballistic missile. You know what they say. The country that perfects boomerang can enjoy complete immunity from all forms of attack. So, you see, the stakes do run pretty high, Mr. Hannay. Yes, I know they do. But if you know there's a leakage of information, why not go to the police? In this country, if one breaks the law... The ones that matter never do. You got me doing it now. Right. Supposing what you say is true, why tell me? Because now they know who I am. I may not have time to send in my report before... Before there's another accident. Is that what you mean? Yes. Hmm. What do you want me to do? The jigsaw puzzle, Mr. Hannay. I want to give you the few bits I have. And then I can go up to Scotland tomorrow, knowing that whatever happens... Scotland? There's a man there I have to see if there's anything to be done. So little time. Information will be out of this country within 48 hours. And this organization, the ones that matter, uh, is there a head man? We think so, but we don't know who he is. He's continually changing his way of life, his front, we call it. Mm -hmm. All we do know is that he has the top joint of his little finger missing. Ah. And these 39 steps, are they in Scotland? Oh, dear Mr. Hannay, there's no short answer to that one. We shall have to begin at the beginning. But before we do, there is one thing I would like. What's that? A cup of tea. Oh, I'm very good at that. I'll put the kettle on. I'm drinking you, but... Miss Robinson?
can I help you? Uh, emergency, please. For emergency services, replace the receiver and dial 999. All right. Blimey, you didn't argue me a stop. You're up bright and early, ain't you? Shh, shh, shh. What's the caper? Uh, good morning. Tell me, do you happen to be a married man? What's this for, the telly or something? No, I... I just like to know, that's all. Well, I am, and then again, depending on how you look at it, I'm not. What do you mean by that? Well, I'm a separated man, see? Obliged to live now. All our cart, you might say. Oh, yes, I, I think I follow you. Now, look. You see those two men out there? Yeah. Well, they happen to be detectives. Come on. Employed by the husband. Whose husband? The husband of the woman upstairs. You see, I happened to slip in last night to have a look at her etchings. <laughs> and I stayed a little too long. Do you follow me? Follow you? Blimey, that's how I come to be a separated man. Only it wasn't etchings. What was it? Bloods regards. Oh. What do you want me to do? Oh, oh. You seem to be a man after my own heart. Now look, would you mind walking up and down just once for me, please? Have you ever had a sucking pig? Tender as a baby. No, I've never heard that either. Oh, peaches done in brandy. Delicious. <sighs> She was absolutely foul to me last term. Actually, I simply adore her, really. Oh, I don't know. Fisher's not so bad. Mavis Carter met her in Edinburgh the halls before last. She said she was absolutely super away from the place. Do you think she's physically attractive? To men, I mean. Oh. Uh, Mavis Carter said she looked absolutely smashing. I think there's been a great tragedy in Fisher's life. You know, like having sort of secret yen for Lord Mountbatten or someone. <laughs> Oh, do shut up about Fisher, Monica. Just because she keeps her private life to herself, you invent things about her. Well, do not. I'm only imagining. Anyhow, she's jolly where the best netball coach the school's ever had. Absolutely. The body of the woman found stabbed early today has not yet been identified. The police are anxious to interview Richard Henney, the tenant of the flat, who they believe may be able to help them in their inquiries. Hannay is thought to be travelling to the north, possibly to Scotland. Aged about 35, of middle height, with brown hair and grey eyes. When last seen, he was wearing a brown tweed suit and a light belted raincoat. The weather forecasters predict long sunny periods this morning, 
with rain spreading later. <laughs> Girls, coming in, Fisher. It's the train. Thank you very much, officer. Will you be taking the first dinner? Uh, yes, thank you. Please forgive me. My name's Richard Hanny. You know, I'd say yon fellow was jumping the gun a bit, eh? netball coach in the business. Now, look, you must try and understand. I'm not running away from anything. But if I give myself up to the police, it'll all take too long, and I might be too late. I don't understand a word of what Why you're not? saying. Why should you? You have, just have to trust me. Oh, excuse me. I'm a police officer. I wonder if you can help me. If you're looking for Richard Hanny, this is the man you want. Is your name Hanny? Excuse me. Take your seat to the first dinner, please.
Did see him jump? No. I reckon he's still in the train. He's hiding in a lavatory, maybe. Hey, we've got a timetable with a kit. Can't wait here all day. I never want to know a thing about nobody. Not even when I pick them up. I'll play to Aberdeen, ask it for some town I never even heard of. What did you say the place was called? Uh, Glen Kirk, near Blair Gowrie. Glen Gowrie. We'll never get there before tomorrow. I think we'll have to drop you off just after we get to Perth. All right, Adel? You're right, Perth. That'll be just after we pass that police checkpoint. What police checkpoint? Oh, the boys are talking about it back in the cafe. Cops are looking for some bloke. Often happens. Did they know what he was wanted for? Ah, they just come down from up north. Do you know? No, me and Adel have been on the road all day. Still, they're looking for somebody. But I don't think any of us three ought to worry about that. Do you, Adel? Too true, Perse. My yes, man. <laughs> Ever been inside? No. I have. So you can talk if you want. What do you mean? You're the bloke, aren't you? Yes, I'm the bloke. You hear that, Adult? He's the bloke. Yeah. How far are we off that police checkpoint? Oh, about, uh, five or six miles. What are you going to do? Hand me over? I never said that. No questions, I said. But I've got to ask you one. Go ahead. What you've done, I don't want to know. Just one thing. Well? Well, it, uh, it wasn't anything, uh, unpleasant, was it? You know, uh, you get me. I get you. It wasn't. Good. Because I wouldn't lift a finger to help one of those. Would I, Harold? No, not you, Purse. Harold, I think we'd better drop him off at Nelly's. I reckon you and Nelly hit it off at street, boy. It wouldn't be long. There she is, the gallows. That's a charming name. Yeah, ain't it? What is it, a pub? Ah, uh, filling station, calf, beds, a lot. Just pull the bell off for Nelly, tell her Percy Baker sent you. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Percy. I'm much obliged to you, and the best of luck. Sit down.
What is it? What do you want? Oh, I, I'm terribly sorry to disturb you, but I'm looking for some food and a bed for the night. This is a fine time to wake people up, isn't it? Oh, well, well, I realize that, but uh, actually, Percy Baker sent me. He told me to ask for Nelly. Oh. Hang on a minute, then. I'll speak to the wife. Nelly? Mm. Nelly? Someone from Percy Baker, Nell. Well, what colour is he? Not red, I hope. Too dark to tell. Well, go and ask him, you old goose. Nell wants to know what colour you are, mister. Uh, white. No, no. She means, are you fair or are you dark? Oh, uh, uh, brown hair, hazel eyes. Why? Right. He's a club or a spade, Nell. His hazel eyes are clubs. And it was a club man I saw him at teacup this evening. Go and ask him when his birthday is. But Nell, you think... Ask him, no matter what he thinks, I'm not having a Sagittarius in this house tonight. When's your birthday, mister? What the devil's that got to do with it? It's only for Nell. You know Nell. The 6th of January. Capricorn. Lucky for him. Lumsden's the name. You've heard of Mrs. Lumsden, of course. Uh, no, I can't say I have. You don't remember the Lumsden case? Spiritualism? No, I suppose you'd be too young. Um, no, but I've been abroad quite a lot. Yes, well, perhaps that explains it. Excuse me. Sit down, Mr... Uh, do sit down, Mr... Uh, Hammond. That's right, you sit down. Oh, it was dreadful, dreadful. They charged her under the Witchcraft Act. Some witch, eh? Ha, 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 Some witch. Of course, you've not met her, have you? Uh, no, not yet. So they put her in jail. That's how I come to buy this place. I thought I'd get her away from it all. But she's the same as ever. At it again. Down the valley of the shadow, and here's a message from your poor dead uncle. Talk of angels and death. Yes. Mr. Hammond, Nell. Mr. Hammond. And uh, what's this old goose been telling you, I wonder? I was telling him what a remarkable woman you are, Nell. Hmm, well, go and get Mr. Hammond a bite to eat while I tell him what a remarkable man you are. What? Oh, right, oh, Nell. Pay no attention to him. Of all our many earthly planes, poor Lumsden exists on the very lowest. He's a poor provider. If it weren't for my circle, we should be in Queer Street. Sit down, Mr. Hammond. <coughs> Are you in trouble? Well, I'm sorry to disturb you at this hour, Mrs. Lumsden, but I'm badly in need of food and sleep. I hate to see people in trouble. That's what got me where I am, my dear. I mean, if people can't find a bit of comfort on this side, where's the harm in trying to help them find it on the other? Well, no harm at all, providing... Yet they gave me four years for that. Four years of youth and beauty wiped clean off my slate. So, uh... You want to lay up here for a while, do you? Well, actually, no. But I have to find somebody, and it's desperately important. Oh, I'm sorry. Percy Baker laid up here for five weeks. It was a lovely little arrangement we had, while it lasted. You see, poor old Lumsden's long past caring about that sort of thing. Well, men don't always go in for the little skinny ones, you know. Oh, no. No, variety is the spice of life. Uh, who is it you've got to go and see? Well, actually, it's somebody who lives at Glen Kirk, and I've got to get there tomorrow. Oh, Glen Kirk, Glen Kirk. Shall we see what we shall see, my dear? I was hoping that Shh, you... Shh, just a minute. There's something coming. Oh, my dear. Oh, here's blood, Mr. Hammond. Here's violence. Oh. The pain in my back. Oh. Well, what do you see? I see a... Oh, no, it's too horrible. The poor creature, the poor wretched woman. What woman? I see long curtains drawn across a window. The room is dark. Now I see something else. Well? A knife, Mr. Hammond. What kind of a knife, Mrs. Lumsden? It's a... Just a minute. Yes, it's a 
knife with a long curved blade. <laughs> Is it from the east, perhaps? It could be. It's Persian, actually. How would you know that, Mr. Hammond? I read it in the paper, Mrs. Lumsden. The same as you did. You're a cool one, Mr. Hanny. A very cool one, my dear. So am I, if it comes to that. Look, why don't you stay here and help us with the circle? They'd never find you here. You've no objection to a murderer about the place? You're no murderer. Not you. Unfortunately, the police don't share your opinion. I can hardly blame them. They'd never believe my story. No, they wouldn't believe mine either. But if I can get to Glenkirk tomorrow... How much money have you got? About 40 pounds. You'll get there. Ah. The point is how. The police have got checkpoints on all the roads. Every railway station will be watched. Listen, if I can get Hiawatha to come all the way from his happy hunting ground every Tuesday, then I can surely get you to Glenkirk tomorrow. For consideration, of course. Of course. Haven't we got a breakfast on in the morning, Lumsden? Uh, yes, no. The three wheelers of Clackmannan. Thirty of them. Oh, I say, that looks good. That's exactly what I want. Thank you so much. That's the best we can do, Mr. Hammond. But I'd do a lot for any friend of Percy Baker's because Percy did a lot for me. That'll be enough from you, Lumsden. Normal service will be resumed as soon as possible. The free wheelers of Clackmannan. Lumsden, you and I must have a little talk. Oh, what about now? About tomorrow's arrangements. That's all ready. Six dozen eggs. Get Just... into the kitchen, you old goose, and let this poor man have his meal in peace. All right, all now. I think I know where to look for the answer, Mr. Henney. Good. Where? Among the free wheelers of Clackmannan. Fixed up now. Be off in a moment. Where is he? I've made him up a packet lunch. In the kitchen. Come to say goodbye. Oh, so you're off then. Now do all I told you, and you should be in Glenkirk by lunchtime. I will, and thank you for everything. <laughs> oh, here, back up, you chap. Lad wants everyone outside. There's still three waiting, and there's only room for one. Oh, they'll have to follow. You'll have to hurry. Here's your lunch. Now put it somewhere safe, because you may be glad of it. You sure you won't change your mind? You'd make a lovely higher waffle. <laughs> How? That's it, you're doing a treat. Pale face, no like red man. Oh, you and me could make things hum around here. Oh, well. Tuesdays and Fridays is circle night, if you're ever this way again. I won't forget. And goodbye, Mrs. Oh, come off it. Nelly. All right, then, Nelly. <laughs> You'll tell me you do this for pleasure. Aye, that's right. Uh, on your way then. Slow mind. Come on! Chicken today, I
the devil do you mean by tearing away like that for a yet after what? I thought you said on your way. I was no hear me shouting. No, I didn't. What the devil's the matter with you anyway? Where do you think you're going? Look here, what right have you to speak to me like that? I'm not breaking the law. Listen, you to me, you feel to be a piece of stick and that's against the road. I just heard you say on your way. Good day to you, Shepherd. Oh, I'm no Shepherd, I'm Lowry. Oh, Mr. Lowry. Uh, do you come from Glenkirk? I am back here, if that's what you mean. I've seen the world, mind you, though. I've seen Glasgow, Cape Town, Bombay, Bohemia, and Mandalay. But a man must away home in the end, like, like the sheep, perhaps. Yes, yes, I see what you mean. Tell me, are there any important folk hereabouts? I mean, is there, is there a laird or someone like that? I am a clean, and a good Scot, too. So the poor fellow put to his grave, no, the best part of a month ago. Oh, I'm very sorry. Is there anyone else? There's folk at the manse, the minister and that. But they're not to my taste, if you understand. Yes, yes, I think I do understand. But tell me, isn't there a doctor or somebody? There's a doctor, I think. But I've had no call to visit him myself. Oh, but hold on a bit. Would it be foreigners you were asking for? Foreigners? Aye, like yourself, man. Sassenachs. Oh. <laughs> you mean Englishmen? Aye. Yes, yes, they probably would be. Well, I'm thinking the new folk up at Glenkirk House. A professor or something. Professor? Mm-hmm. And uh, where is this house? Keep on towards the loch there yes. and you can't miss it. Well, thank you very much. I'm much obliged to you. Well, thank you, Shepherd. I mean, uh, Larry. Aye. That's it, Baz. That's right. <laughs> There's no sign of him there. We'll check the other road. here, but I haven't seen him. Nor I. He probably went round by the other road. Aye. Ah, oh, well. All right. Thank you. 
Siap! Come up. Well, howdy, partner. You sure got me covered. Say, who's the boss of this year outfit? My uncle. He's a friend of the sheriff. Really? Well, now you listen. Get him up. Well, would you like to give a very, very secret message to your uncle if I tell you exactly what to say? Sure. Good. Now you listen to me. David! Here he is. David, you're to go straight in and wash your hands. I'm dying for a cup of tea. Good. Me too. Good. Well, David, what is it? Tea's ready, I suppose. Yes, but before that, I've got a secret message to deliver. Ah, Davy Crockett again, I see. No, Uncle, this is a real message. Oh, well, who's it from this time? Nanny Robinson. Who did you say? Nanny Robinson. Yes, I... I thought you did. Who told you to say that, I wonder? The man in the old summer house in the garden, Uncle. The man in the old summer house in the garden. I see. Well, let's go down and see what it's all about, shall we, David? Run along and tell your aunt there'll be another for tea. Okay, Uncle. Oh, not okay. Say very well, Uncle. Did Nanny send you here? Yes. Uh, in a way. You know what's happened? Oh, my dear chap, she was one of our best people. I'm very sorry. She, she was a brave woman. It's Hanny, isn't it? Well, I've taken to calling myself Hammond. Oh, quiet, quiet. Well, there's no need to worry about the police. Not now. My name's Logan, Professor Logan. I'm glad to meet you, sir. Let's go back to the house and have a chat, shall we? Yes. Did she tell you how they intended to get this information out of the country? No, sir. I think she knew. Oh, yes, I think she knew. Well, we'll have to move fast, Hanny. Yes, I know. She said that everything we have on Boomerang could be over the other side within 48 hours. Or even less. Now, have you told me absolutely everything? I must be sure of that if I'm to know how to act. Yes, sir, I think that's everything. Good. Well, I think we're all going to be pretty grateful to you, my boy, before we're done. Oh, oh, there, there is one other thing, sir. Yes? Uh, something to do with the man in control of this organization. What about him? Well, Nanny said that apparently the top of his little finger was missing. <laughs> Which one? Uh, this one, I think. <laughs> you sure it wasn't this one? I'm sorry, Mr. Hanney. I've been leading you down the garden path. Or is it up? I never can remember. Well, I certainly seem to be in the wrong garden. Precisely. You put me in a very difficult position, Mr. Hanny. Well, what do you propose to do about it? Ah, that's the problem. If I were to hand you over to the police, it's just possible that you might be able to persuade them mm, to take some action which would be inconvenient to us just at this moment. By the way, your nanny was quite right about Boomerang. We've got it. On the other hand, I can't let you go around loose, can I? What are we going to do with you? No. No, I don't think I should make a dash for it if I were you. Remember, you're Richard Hanny, wanted for murder. <laughs> I think there's only one answer, Mr. Hanny. 
Don't touch it. Arthur? Your tea's getting cold. All right, Louisa, we're just coming. I ought to shoot you now, Logan. But I've too much to explain to the sheriff as it is. You won't get far, Hanny. We'll see. Give you enough milk? Yes, sure. How about you? That's all right, fine. Ah, Mr. Hammond, there you are. Arthur's such a talker, isn't he? You've met everybody, haven't you? Tell me, do you take sugar? No sugar, thank you. In fact, no tea. Thank you. Yes. And you sort of fella? <laughs> Probably in with the sheriff now. Better wait. Uh, yeah, I grant you that, Mr. Henry. And I don't doubt that you'll be able to convince the authorities in London that under the circumstances you took a proper course of action. It's certainly a most remarkable story. <laughs> most remarkable. Yes, sir. But something must be done about Logan now. Once he put that plan into operation... Oh, I'll get on to Edinburgh. Your whole story will be on the tether print of the Scotland Yard in two shakes of a duck's tail. And Logan, in the meantime? You can leave Logan to us. I'll have him watched day and night, and something will very conveniently go wrong with his telephone. Good. Now we're getting somewhere. Hey, you know what? If you hadn't just happened to have that wee pistol with you, Mr. Hanny, I doubt if you'd got out of that house alive. I think you're probably right. Uh, very neat little jobs, aren't they? Oh, very neat, providing you're at the right end. <laughs> go and stand over there, Hanny. What? Do I see and raise up your hands? Now, look here, Sherry. You're under arrest, Hanny. Charged with willful murder of an unknown woman at Oswald Court, London, on Tuesday last. Well, that's ridiculous. You've heard my story. A lot of ridiculous nonsense. It so happens Professor Logan is one of my very closest friends. Oh. See where you are, honey. All right, there's no need to shout. That's not loaded, you know. What? Well, you don't think I go around with a dangerous weapon in my pocket, do you? Oh, hold that man! there while I say a few words by way of introduction. Well, as you see, our speaker has arrived at last. 
although from rather an unexpected direction. <laughs> well, now, today, under the auspices of the Field Club, Mr. Pringle is going to give us a little talk, which he has called, charmingly, The Woods and the Wayside in August, with a very special emphasis on the spleenwort, which we looked at last term. You remember, for form and upwards? Well, now, without further ado, I'm going to ask you to give Mr. Pringle a real St. Catherine's welcome. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Ah, well, uh, 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 ladies and... Uh, oh, ladies. <laughs> how, how stupid of me. The wayside and the woods in August. Well, uh, before I start talking to you about the spleen wart, uh, uh, no, no, the spleen wart, uh, which, in my opinion, is the most disgusting thing to talk about anyway. I, I think I, I ought to tell you a little story. Now, there was an Englishman, a Scotsman, and an Irishman. I might add that all this happened long before aeroplanes or anything like that. Now, the Englishman and the Scotsman were walking from Dublin to Cork. Well, it might have been from Cork to Dublin. <laughs> I'm not sure which, anyway, whichever was the shorter. What's he doing now? He's giving him a lecture. You must admit the fellow's got nerve. So the Irishman says, Picotta, I'd rather have slept with a pig. And the Englishman says, But Paddy, my dear boy, that's exactly what you did do. Excuse me, miss. Yes? We're police officers. I'm afraid we'll have to take your lecturer back to the station with us. Let's stop, but it, it was a present. I mean, a farmer gave them to not me. Not you, brother. Mr. Pringle? You may know him as Pringle, miss. We only know him as Hanny, Richard Hanny. Richard Hanny? Where is he? He's in here. <laughs> of course, all this is very far removed from the subject on which your most uh, charming headmistress would like a lot of emphasis to be placed. Now, uh, uh, let's not forget that spleen warts aren't everybody's meat. Uh, I had a parrot once uh, that was uh, simply allergic to spleen warts. If one so much as opened a spleen wart in his presence, his language was something frightful. Good <laughs> heavens, Fisher, I can't have a sordid scene in front of my girls. Now, now the sight of spleen warts absolutely disgusted him. And I'm sure you will agree uh, that a disgusted parrot is a most unhappy bird. Now, here was I faced with a situation oh, no. which, even as a most devoted admirer of a spleen wart, I could not tolerate. As far as the woods and the wayside is concerned, to sum up rather rapidly... Um, well, I, I would like you girls to take away with you this one rather splendid thought. Whatever you do, don't fall by the wayside, but more important still, keep out of the woods. Especially in August. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, dear old Fisher. <laughs> you ought to get a medal for this. Please don't speak to me. You know this creature, Fisher? Yes, I do, Miss Prescott. He's the man who insulted me on the train. Oh, you don't imagine I wanted to kiss you, do you? How dare you talk to a member of my staff in this manner? Dry up, honey. All present and correct, Miss Prescott, except for Butler and Kemp in the sand. I'll come and dismiss them. And the sooner you get this man off the premises, the better. Fisher, now listen to what I have to say. Telephone Scotland Yard. Tell them to check up on Boomerang. There's been a leak. Something to do with the 39 steps. Do you understand? I haven't the faintest idea what you're talking about. Oh, Fisher, don't be such a chump. This is important. Contact Scotland Yard. Here it is. Oh, there you Get your arm broken. The man they want is a Professor Logan at Glen Kirk. Will you do that for me? Oh! Fisher! Uh, just a moment, miss. Yes? We should like you to come along to the station with us. Whatever for? Formal identification of the prisoner, miss. It'll only take a few minutes, if you wouldn't mind. Mind? I should love it. There's the police station. But we've just passed it. 
We aren't aiming at that police station, miss. Then where are we going? In Verere. This man's to be questioned by the sheriff principal. Our orders are to take him there direct. But you have no orders to take me. Well, you'll be brought back as soon as possible, miss. How far is it to Inverary? 74 miles. I can hardly expect to get back tonight. Not before lights out. May I have a look at your warrant, old fella? You'll see the warrant soon enough when we get to Inverary. Hey, fish pots. Care for a little bet? No. All right, I'll lay it with you. I'll bet you 100 to 1 in anything you fancy that your sheriff principal is only half a little finger on his left hand. This isn't the road to Inverary at all. This road goes south. I know the way, miss. I win, I think. Blast. Bad luck, boys. All right, miss, get out. What's happened? Get out. We'll have to change the wheels. There's a spare in the back. What about him? Quick, fix them together. Get in. As long as you stay, he stays. This must be fate, Fisher. Pity you're not my type. <laughs> Pity you're not mine. Run for it. We've got a lot to do, and our two friends are armed. Come on. I won't. Come on. I won't. Let them put the wheel on that one. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Come on, Fisher. Oh, for heaven's sake, let's sit down for a bit. Oh, I'm sorry, but there's no time. Anyway, it's good training for netball. Come on. That's not funny. We've got to get on. There's no time for sightseeing. Oh, what's the use of all this? What possible chance can you have <laughs> tied up to me? <laughs> That's a question for your husband to decide, if ever you're lucky enough to get one, which I doubt. Meanwhile, I must admit you're the ruddy white man's burden, all right. That pleases me a lot. Anyhow, those policemen are bound to find us as soon as it gets light. Oh, I don't know. It's not very late. And we've the whole night ahead of us. <laughs> and they're not policemen. Oh, so you're still sticking to that, are you? Give me strength! Now, listen to me, Fishpots. Either I'm telling the truth or I'm not. Do you agree? Well? Well, if I'm not, I'm just a common murderer who only two days ago stabbed a poor defenseless woman in the back. And you're alone with me on a dark and desolate moor. Alone with a man who'll stop at nothing to get rid of you. If you prefer it that way, it's all yours. I'm not afraid of you. And you're ruddy well ought to be. Now, come on. And if I tell you to do anything, jump to it. Don't ask silly questions. Ow! Ow! ow. Can't you say anything else? Come on, Fisher. Now, you back me up in everything I say or do. Understand? I suppose so. Right. Come on, then. Oh, you're too late for a drink. It's a way past time. Yes, well, we had a slight accident a few miles back. Our car ran into a bridge. You mean you'll be wanting to stay here the night? Yes. You'll be man and wife, I suppose? Yes. You know luggage? Uh, well, of course, we had luggage, but naturally we had to leave that in the car. Oh, well, maybe I could lend the young lady a nice gown. McDougall, the book. Aye. Do you mind signing, please? Oh, good evening. Good evening. I'll away up and put a match to your fire. We've just got the one room with the one bed, but she'll not be minding that. No. Have well, you been eating supper? Uh, can you send up some sandwiches? Oh, and a large whiskey. Two large whiskies. Very good, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, I, I think you'd better sign the register, darling. It, you must get used to using your new name. Mr. and Mrs. Harry Hammond. Hammersmith, London. Thank you. Now, oh, well, if you'll come upstairs, I'll show you your room. you'd have chosen for yourself, dear, but it's better than nothing when there's a man about. Now, if you like to slip off that wet skirt, I'll have it dried in the kitchen for oh. you. No, don't bother about that. It will dry just as well here. Thank you, anyhow. Nah. Well, I've no doubt your man will take great care of you. Of course he will. Come on, darling. Oh! Here's what they ordered. Are they man and wife, do you think? I dinna ken and I dinna care. But they're terribly in love. He never leaves her side for a moment. Reminds me of our courting days, MacDougall. Here, yeah, take the tree, woman, and don't be so damn soft. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not going to stay in this room with you all night. Lord, give me patience. Fisher, there are nearly 30 million women on this island. Why did I have to pick you? Where can you go without me? I shall tell them the whole story, and they'll call the police, and I shall be released. But you don't care what happens to me, I suppose? No. Quick. Sit on my knee. Come in. There you are, then. <laughs> Just thawing out. Uh, I can see that. Well, is there anything else you'll be wanting now? No, I don't think so. Is there, darling? No, darling. Oh, well, I'll away to my own bed, then. Please don't go away. Why, dearie? Is there something wrong? Uh, no, of course not, Mrs... Uh, MacDougall. Mrs. MacDougall. She wants to tell you the truth. We're a runaway couple. Oh, I can't at all the time. And I suppose they're after you. Is that what's wrong? Y yes, as, as a matter of fact, they are after us. But, but you wouldn't give us up, would you? Of course we wouldn't have give you up. Not to McDougall's. Well, a good night to you both. You'll not be disturbed, I promise you. 
Good night, Mrs. MacDougall. Good night, sweet dreams. Poor old fish. You are having a night, aren't you? Here, drink this up, it'll do you good. You know, you are a bit damp. I wouldn't like you to go down with pneumonia on top of everything else. Why don't you take it off? I won't mind. Thank you. I'll keep it on. Just as you like. Slon Shiba. If my stockings are damp, I'll take those off. Well, that's the most sensible thing you've said tonight. Want any help? No. Come along, Miss Fisher. Place yourself on the operating table. All right, you needn't look so alarmed. This is armistice night. Anyway, I'm half asleep on my feet as it is. I'm not going to lie on that bed. <laughs> as long as you're chained to me, you can't very well avoid it. Come on. Ow! <laughs> I wish you wouldn't keep saying ow like that. In a respectable house like this, it might be misinterpreted. Good night, my love. Further orders in the morning.
So we followed them all over the place. The car's a complete write-off. Yes, of course it was. If you can manage it, I'd rather have the whiskey hot. All right, I'll fetch some hot water, sir. But we had to take the girl. Henny told her quite a bit. He tried to persuade her to phone up the yard. No, no, I don't think there's any chance of picking them up now. Yeah. Yes, that's all we can do. All right, goodbye. Logan's moving right away. He says with Hannah on the loose, he's got to. So it's the 39 steps tomorrow night at 11.17. How about Boomerang? He's calling at the palace for that on the way. You're toddy, sir. Let him have five shillings. This place residential? Aye. I expect you get a few people in this time of the year. Oh, aye, we do. You didn't happen to have anyone in tonight, did you? Aye. Not a young couple by any chance. But Dougal! What sort of a daft body am I married on? Do you want to get us all jailed? What did you take for these? Five shillings. Give it to me. Here, now out you go, the pair of you. And dinner you let on, you've got a drink here after all. You better let us finish the drink. On you go now, no argument. Look here, we came here. Well, this is ridiculous. Never have been served in the first place. Out what kind of a hotel is this, anyway? Don't you care what's it into, Mark Dougal? Risk our livelihood. You old fool. You would like get the young couple away, would you? Fisher, how did you get out of this? My tiny hand, etc., etc., and a bit of soap. Ah. Why didn't you run away? I was going to, but, well, I happened to find out that you had been telling me the truth, so I decided to stay. Oh. And what brought about this sudden change of heart? Those two men came here last night, and I heard them telephoning. What did they say? Oh, quite a lot. Because of you, somebody's moving. Yeah. And they'll call for Boomerang at Buckingham Palace. Buckingham Palace? Anything else? Something about the 39 steps. Come on, come on. 39 steps tomorrow night at 11.17. 39 steps, 11, 17. Hmm. Which is their room? Oh, they left as soon as they stopped telephoning. Oh, fish. Why didn't you wake me up? That gives them four or five hours start. I've got to get to London. We've got to find out about those 39 steps. You'll come with me. But I can't. Oh, Fisher, the blazes with netball. This is important. You must go to Scotland Yard and tell them everything we know. It may be our only chance. What are you going to do? I shall go to Buckingham Palace. Obviously, somebody meets somebody there. Maybe Logan himself. And information is passed. You sure they said Buckingham Palace? Well, he said the palace. palace of palace. course, it could be another palace, like mm -hmm. Kensington Palace, Kensington. or Lambeth Palace, or... Oh, I've got it. Of course. The Palace Music Hall, Fisher. You're wonderful. Hey, whoa! Hey. Won't you take your seat? Oh, yes. Uh, my friend's a bit late. May, may I leave her ticket with you? Yes, sir. What name, sir? Uh, uh, Miss Fisher. Fisher. Very good. Right. They won't believe us. Who did you see? The assistant commissioner himself. 
They're much more anxious to get you. Do they check the people from the ministries and the boomerang security people? Yes, nothing's missing. But they must be. You heard them say they got it. Don't you think we'd better go? The police may have followed me here. No. Wait a minute. This next term may be interesting. Sorry, sir. Nobody's allowed to leave the theater. It's a big idea. I'm just going around the corner to that one. Sorry, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's my pleasure to introduce you to one of the most remarkable men alive in the world today. A human encyclopedia of facts and figures. A brain that's baffled the scientists of five continents. Ladies and gentlemen, here to answer your questions, whatever they may be, none other than Mr. Memory. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Before we begin, I must tell you at once that I am not a magician. I do not claim to be able to tell you whether your future life partner will be blonde or brunette. Or how many children you can expect? Yeah, borrow this, please. Nor whether your Uncle George will remember you in his will. For the answer to questions such as... I've got it. I've got it. You will have to go to the court. Of course, there's nothing missing. But there would be if they got Mr. Memory out of the country. All the information they want is in his head. Sporting, scientific, geographical, political and historical. Now, you see, fish. Who's ready to all the facts and figures and details of Boomerang are borrowed. What? Memorized by him. Then put back before they missed. There's some gentlemen here would like to speak to you, sir. Are you Richard Henry? Yes, but there's something you must know. Keep that. Just come forward. I know, officer, but that the box is going to be out there. But this is quite important. Please listen. And the next question, please. Where are the thirty-nine steps? Come on, answer me. Where are the thirty-nine steps? No. Wait, please. The 39 steps are on the south bank in Chandler's Reach, just below New Cut, under the headquarters of an organization known as the... <laughs> Well, bring them on, bring them on. What do you know about Boomerang, Mr. Memory? Only what I learnt, officer. It was a big job, sir. Biggest I ever taken. The weight of the booster end is proportional to the fourth root of the velocity. Beam strength varies as a function of C squared over R. Fusing temperature is limited by wavelength, which is not less than 50 microcycles beyond the time return. Am I right, sir? Quite right, old chap. He's gone. We don't know where it's been, do we? For once, Fisher, you may be right. 